I love historical fiction, especially those amazing historical fiction books that give an often overlooked perspective, like for example, the perspective of women in history. We were there too. So in this book break video, I have got 15 amazing feminist historical fiction books to recommend to you. Such a long list, there are just so many brilliant ones I couldn't narrow it down. I'm going to go through the books in this video in chronological order, in the order of when they were set. So to begin, let's go all the way back to ancient history and start with A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. So this book puts women front and centre of the Greek myths. It retells the story of the Trojan War from the perspective of a whole chorus of voices of the women in the story, from goddesses to nymphs to princesses to slave girls. There are so many women in these stories who are so important and central to the stories, but we so rarely actually get to hear the myths from their perspective, so this is the book that changes that. Next, let's fast forward to the 16th century for The Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. This is a really fun one that's actually set in a kind of alternate history and it's about a young girl who is forced to become a sin eater and this was a real historical thing. So our main character is a sin eater. She's not allowed to speak to anyone and no one will speak to her or listen to her but she refuses to stay quiet. This is a really fun book about her solving this massive mystery, this huge conspiracy theory in the royal family, even when no one will listen. Then for a 17th century book, we have The Mercies by Kieran Millward Hargrave, and this is actually based on a true story. So it's about a group of women who end up stranded on this island after all of the men of their island are killed in a storm while out fishing. So these women have to learn to fend for themselves, which then attracts attention from people who fear they are using witchcraft. So it's very much about men's fear of women's power and of female spaces. For a book set in 18th century London, you should read Daughters of Night by Laura Shepard Robinson. So this is about a woman called Caroline Corsham who finds an injured woman in the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens and she calls the police, but when the police find out that this woman was a prostitute, they completely stop caring and so Caro has to solve the crime herself. So this book really confronts the long history of sex workers being ignored by the people who are supposed to protect them and the book then puts a woman in charge of restoring justice. And then there's The Book of Night Women by Marlon James, which is set at the end of the 18th century when a girl called Lilith is born into slavery. And a group of the other slave women, who call themselves the Night Women and have been planning a revolt, see her as key to their plans. So it's a very violent, sad book that does an amazing job, especially considering it's written by a man, of telling this coming-of-age story of a woman, but within the context of slavery. Another late 18th century book, but that also goes through the generations all the way up to present day, is Remembrance by Rita Woods, and this one is also slightly magical. So we have these three timelines. In the late 18th century, we meet a slave called Abigail, who is forced to leave her children behind and escort her mistress to safety during the slave revolts. Then in the mid-19th century, we meet a slave called Margot, who is forced to flee when disease starts to spread. And then in present day Ohio, we meet a woman called Gael, who works in a nursing home. And the stories are all linked by this slightly magical, fantastical element, so these powers that these women have access to, and it's about the bonds between these women through the generations. Next, going to the early 19th century, we have The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. I actually did a whole video with Janice Hadlow, which I will link to below. This is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice and the events after the book finished, but all from the perspective of Mary Bennett. So it gives you a whole new perspective on the story from the point of view of the most often forgotten and least popular Bennett sister, both within her family and within readers of the novel. But after having read this book, I now have a whole new appreciation for Mary Bennett. And then while we're in this time period, another really fun Regency book is The True Queen by Zen Cho. So this is a fantastical alternate version of Regency Britain. It's the sequel to The Sorcerer's the Crown by Zen Cho, and this time our main characters are these two sisters, and one of them, in order to save her sister, has to go to London and trick these high society magicians into believing that she is a magical prodigy. Then in the mid-19th century, we have 
have The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil, which is a really fun, gripping historical thriller about an artist called Iris who becomes involved with the members of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. They want her to be their muse, but she insists that she will be an apprentice and learn how to paint from them herself. But at the same time, she is being stalked by this collector. So it's partly this wonderful story about the artistic world that she joins, and it's partly this really page-turning thriller. And then another mid-19th century book is The Woman Who Read Too Much by Bahiyi Nakhiavani, and this is about an array Iranian poet who has these predictions that keep coming true. So she keeps predicting the deaths of these powerful figures that then happen, and people start to suspect that she's not just predicting the future, she's actually writing the future and causing it to happen. And this book is inspired by the true story of this Iranian poet, and I love historical fiction that's based on real women's lives. Remembered by Yvonne Battlevelton is set in 1910. And it's about a woman called Spring, an emancipated slave, whose son has now been charged with committing a crime of intentionally driving his car into a shop window. And the book is set on this night where Spring sits awake worrying that her son is going to die and going back through her memories. And she's accompanied by the ghost of her dead sister and sort of goes back to rewrite her history for herself and tell her son the story of where he came from while she still can. Then in the 1920s we have The Age of Light by Whitney Scherer. So this is about the photographer Lee Miller when she arrives in Paris in the late 1920s and becomes the muse for the artist Man Ray. But again, she refuses to be just a muse. And it's a fascinating novelization of this real woman and it's so interesting following her as she develops these really radical new photography techniques. The Shadow King by Marza Mengist is set in 1935 during Mussolini's invasion of Ethiopia, but casting light on the women soldiers who have been largely left out of historical record. And this book is written in this really lyrical way. It uses a kind of Greek chorus of collective voices at some point, combining all these different perspectives of what it means to be a woman at war. And then also set in the 1930s, but flashing forwards to the 1960s as well, is The Muse by Jessie Burton. So this is partly set in 1930s Spain, where we follow an art dealer's daughter called Olive, who is very talented and has all these ambitions of her own. And then in 1960s London, we meet a woman called Adele, who's just started working at an art gallery when this mysterious painting is delivered with a secret history waiting to be uncovered. And just like in The Doll Factory and The Age of Light that I mentioned earlier, this book does a really good job of subverting what it means to be a muse and what a woman's role in art can be. And then my final book is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This one is set in the 1960s, and there is some disagreement on what counts as historical fiction. There's so many different definitions. Some people say it can only be set in the first half of the 20th century or earlier. Some people say it just has to be written 50 years or more after it's set. I think we can slip this one under the net as our final book. So Half of the Yellow Sun is set during the Nigerian Civil War and it follows the lives of these three different people. A 13-year-old houseboy who works for this revolutionary professor, a woman called Alana who is the beautiful mistress of this professor, and a shy English man called Richard who is in love with Alana's twin sister. So they're all connected, kind of one step removed, but they all have to flee for their lives as the Nigerian troops advance on the university. So I would love to know any recommendations you guys have of more feminist historical fiction like this. I will also link our playlist here of all of the videos we've done on historical fiction books because it's such a great genre. So click through and have a browse and we'll see you next time.